Well, so far in Chapter 6, we've been uh, putting the tools together that we need to talk about probability. We've talked about um, uh, how to work with sets, which have a close association to probability. And we also talked about counting techniques, which we'll use later on in this section. So um, now let's go ahead and, and get started with our uh, conversation on probability. So in uh, slide number two, um, we lay out what we want to get done in this section. Here we want to define and write the sample space for an experiment. We'll make sure to define that. And then we'll uh, compute the two types of probabilities. We'll discuss those, uh, the classical uh, probability concept and empirical probability, sometimes called uh, relative frequency probability. And then we'll talk about applying the basic rules of, of probability. So let's start out in slide number three with, I, I guess, the most basic of, of you know, definitions. What is probability? We can say that probability can be thought of as the branch of mathematics that produces a number that expresses the likelihood of the occurrence of a specific event. Uh, probability really kind of started out through uh, Mendel and genetics and, uh, you know, the fundamental... Uh, uh, use of probability in genetics and um, also in, you know, thing, applications and weather forecasting and that kind of thing. And so, um, you know, they've kind of, it's kind of been refined and, and given uh, new applications as we go along. Uh, let's see. Also, we can say that a probability experiment is, is, is a process that leads to well-defined results. Remember, we talked about that in Section 6.1 when we talked about... Um, the events had to be empirical. In other words, the uh, outcomes had to be well-defined. Uh, and those were the results of the, a probability experiment. We call those outcomes. Okay, so in slide number four, let's get to our couple of our fundamental definitions. The first one, we can say that for a probability experiment, the sample space, denoted by the letter S, is the set of all possible outcomes. So, if we, want, if we have a probability experiment and we can write down all the possible outcomes that could happen, that set is called the sample space. So we use set notation to denote the sample space. Now remember, the results have to be well-defined for a probability experiment. So um, uh, it will be, it'll be fairly obvious to us what a, a typical outcome will look like. Now, many times we can't write out all the elements in a sample space because there are too many, but we can use the counting techniques that we talked about in uh, Section 6.3 and talk about the cardinality of a sample space. And um, if the sample sp space is, is very small, we can draw a, a tree diagram. Otherwise, we can just write them out in set notation, and sometimes we can't even do that. We have to use the... Um, uh, multiplication principle to, to uh, find out what the size of the sample space is. And one more definition. Uh, we can say that an event is a subset of the sample space. Let me give you one, one quick uh, example of that. Let's say for an example, an experiment is to roll a die. And then the sample space then would simply be the outcome of the roll. And that would be the digits 1 through 6. So there's our experiment. There's the sample space for the experiment. And let's let, uh, let's say event E be the event that the roll is odd. Well, if we do that, we can now list the um, the outcomes associated with event E. Well, let's see, it would be an odd if it was a 1, or a 3, or a 5. So notice there, there's our event space, and it has three elements in it. So there's a sample space, and, a, and its event, and notice here that the event is a subset, a subgroup, of the sample space itself. All right, let's start to take a look at an example here in slide number five. Um, a pollster asked the following question. Is your personal financial situation better, worse, or about the same as compared to five years ago? 
And then the pollster asks, have you ever declared bankruptcy? And let's write the sample space for S uh, using set notation. And then we'll determine the size of the sample space. All right, so let's go ahead and get going on that. And um, you know, this one, the, the notice here, for example, one, the outcomes are fairly limited. So here's a case where we could use a tree diagram to um, help us write out the sample space. OK, so let's see. The pollster is asking two questions. The first question can be answered three ways. Your financial situation. Is it better? Is it worse? Or is it about the same? And then, for each of those responses, we can ask whether or not uh, the respondent has declared bankruptcy. So they could uh, either respond with a yes, I'll just put a Y, or a no, I'll, pu I'll put an N for that. And that's true for all the branches on our uh, tree diagram. So having said that, we can go ahead and write the sample space now. Now let's do, let's do this. I'll write B for better, W for worse, and S for the same. So think of what the sample space would consist of. Well, let's see. They could be doing better and have declared bankruptcy. That's B and a Y. Or they could be doing better and not declared bankruptcy. So that's a B and an N. Or they could be doing worse and declared bankruptcy. A, a W and a Y. Uh, they could be doing worse and not declared bankruptcy. That's W and an N. And then finally, they could be doing the same, declared bankruptcy, that's an S and a Y. And then finally, um, they could be doing the same and not declared bankruptcy, that's S and N. So let's see, how many elements do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six. So let's see here. The size of the sample space then, I'll put N of S for our cardinality. And that is... Well, let's see, that's going to be 6. That's the size, just by counting out the outcomes in the set. But notice here, we can also use the multiplication principle. There are three ways to answer the first question. There's two ways to answer the second question uh, with a product of 6. All right, so that's how we write the sample space for an experiment. Now, um, having said that, let's go ahead now and take a look at the um, um, one of the fundamental rules of, of computing probabilities here. The first of these two large types of, of methods we can use to find probability, and that's in slide number six with classical probability. So let's assume that S is a sample space and that N of S, the size of S, uh, those are the number of outcomes it has. Each outcome is equally likely with classical probability. All right, so so uh, there are n of s number of outcomes. Each of those are equally likely to occur. So we can say that under those conditions, if a is an event associated with the sample space, then the probability of a occurring, denoted by, notice our notation there, p of a, meaning the probability of a, the probability of event a, is given by the probability of a occurring, or P of A is the size of the event space divided by the size of the sample space. All right, and notice I wrote over here the number of outcomes of event A divided by the total possible number of outcomes, the size of the sample space. So we call that classical probability. Now let's try a, 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 an example of this and see how this works now. So in slide number seven, we have, an exa we have example number two. A box contains 10 tickets numbered 1 through 10. In an experiment, two tickets are drawn in succession, and uh, the first ticket is not replaced before the second draw. Let's let A represent that the, uh, the event that a 3 is drawn, and B represent the event that the numbers add up to 5. Let's compute the probability of A and the probability of B. All right? So, um, 
button. Let's go ahead and solve this and see what we get. So for example, two, let's do this. First, uh, we need to find the cardinality of the sample space. In other words, the total possible number.